Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Better Than Starting Mand. We are here. I'm feeling a little bit better anyways. And we are going to do a, a new mission today. I have been taking your advice into account and giving some good thought to my next goals. And we're going to test a whole bunch of things today and get some of these uh, excess contracts out of the way as well to try and keep the game moving along. So the technologies I have decided we are going to select today are thrust vectoring, because these engines are much, much more efficient than what I, what I currently have available. And they're actually the core of what I will use for most of my interstellar missions, because these are, I use these for most, I use the LVT-30s right now, and these are more efficient. And I use the LV, what's it called, the LV-420, and these are more efficient. So we're going to research that. And we are going to research spacesuits first. Now there's a good, there's method to my madness here. Um, and I will show you why. So we have 118, we need 70, 62 science for another technology right now. All right, so let's get out of here and I'll show you what my plan is. But first, let's hit the contracts. So I have a feeling that we can do this and this in one mission. An orbital EVA and a small payload to orbit. I think we can do both of these in one single mission. Um, let's see. Rockamax BACC solid fuel booster. Oh, it has to orbit the moon, so that's a long haul. We'll have to, that'll be a big job to get that there. And I don't have any way to get rid of the contract without accepting a twenty thousand dollar cost. Medium payload to orbit. We're not going to do that today because we've already got a small payload going up for World's First, which is inaccurate, but we're not going to dock vessels today, we're not going to min miss, we're not doing a man moon or flyby, so that's the two contracts for today's activities. And we're not going to be going to an escape trajectory anytime soon, so we'll just have to deal with it. All right, let's go find my 20-ton payload lifter, and we're going to redesign it, because I have a sneaking hunch it's going to be better than 20 tons once we're done with it today. Lifter, 20 ton payload. And this will become 20 ton payload mark two. Okay. So the changes we need to make include, first we need to get these out of here. Because they're the that's the payload. Now I was informed, and we're gonna test this quickly, um, that I might not actually need double ports for this. I might only need the one port for this to work, like like this, because it should be able to decouple. And we'll, we'll test that at the launch pad. All right, let's pull off the bottom stage. Oh. Whoops, that didn't work so well. There we go. Get rid of the old, out with the old, and in with the new. See, the uh, cost of this is going to be offset by the two contracts we're going to do, but I have hope that this will be able to launch a much larger payload. I'll have to figure out how to test that at a later date, but for now, we'll just have to make do. And then we replace these with the LVT-45s as well. Because, yeah, we're getting a much bigger bang for our fuel buck here. And so there's the core, other than adding the two missing pieces, which is a pair of batteries for the, uh, see this one hasn't been updated with the final design here. And we'll have two batteries, or four batteries. Uh, two should do. We only need enough on there to actually handle the re-entry part of the mission. And then we need four parachutes on here as well. And those are the best parachutes I still have access to, which is unfortunate, but there's nothing I can do about that. Okay, and then it's time for the payload. And this is going to be a two-part payload. We need our manned capsule, which this one comes with a built-in heat shield, I believe. Uh, blade of shielding, yes, it does. Okay. All right, how are we going to do this? We need to do this a little differently than currently designed. We need a decoupler. 
And we do not want our man capsule attached to that if we can avoid it. Oh wait, no, the man capsule is gonna have to go on top. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this is gonna be a little bit more of an involved process. Let's see what's cheaper. A stack decoupler or a um, docking port. Docking port costs 280. Stack decoupler costs 400. So these are much cheaper. Okay, well, done and done. Okay, so we need that to detach from there. Then we need our payload. Small commercial payload can go right there. And that can go right there. We're going to need some spare batteries and its own RCS mix right here. Actually, this guy just needs its own RCS. We'll disable electric and monopropellant on there to give us enough thrust to actually control the thing. We're going to need three thrusters on here, centered so that they don't impact our ability to get in and out of the ship. And we'll double check to make sure we can actually exit the ship before launch on this thing. It needs its own parachute. I don't want to risk taking the other uh, capsule to the ground with the, uh, the bigger parachute, you see. Now we need some electrical for this and its own little RCS tank as well. And we should be able to handle that no problem. <laughs> um, let's see, do I really want this commercial payload to have its own RCS tank? Let's see. I suppose it makes some sense to have it on there. Although it would actually be even more valuable. You know what we could do? We could do it this way. Decouple that. Add those four on there. And add a decoupler. And that. These can go right up here at the top. There we go. I think that should be still accessible. And we'll get a ladder on here. We'll find out if that's actually even necessary or if we're blocking the door. Because you just, for an EVA, all we need to do is actually just get out of the ship and look around and test our spacesuit. All right, then we need some batteries. We'll get four of the larger batteries. No. We're just doing an orbital mission here. This isn't a... Okay, so how much of a payload? Okay, it's under 10 ton. It's under a 10 ton payload is interesting so hold on if this is under how much do those if that's under 10 tons and this is designed as a 20 ton lifter we can take a second payload into orbit we can take a we can take one of the other commercial payloads nice because why not get as much bang for a buck out of these missions as possible we might as well take this medium payload into orbit Rocco max 2477 what is that? A solid grade... A solid rocket. Okay, it's a special... Hmm. We'll have to save that for another day. Medium payload to orbit. Hmm. That we will do right now. Because we can squeeze it on this thing. Because, as I say, the old ship was designed as a 20-ton payload lifter, and we've just added more efficient engines to it right across the board. So it seems to me we should be able to... That's the one we just put on, and we need this one. Come on, get in there. Zooming, zooming, zooming. Medium payload, and we're gonna add um, an intervening docking port so that we can separate these if necessary in the future. Just on the offhanded chance that these missions that have been discussed about uh, being able to, uh, re of requiring the relocation of uh, payloads has ever come into uh, ever come into being. I know that's something that's been discussed for better than the starting man, but whether or not it's actually been implemented is another question entirely. There we go. That should hold that together quite nicely. Beautiful. Okay. That is locked together quite nicely. I think oh, hold on. I have never mind. I have batteries down there. Oh, but I oh, I, I remember now. We want to take those off and put four up here so that the batteries would actually survive re-entry using our patented 
LVT45 um, uh, reentry shields. Lovely. Okay, and we've got four batteries up there, four batteries down here. Electric and mono propellant disabled there because we'll re -en enable that on re-entry. I think now let's just double check payload size 17.7 We should be able to get that to orbit. No problem because it was designed to put two of these into orbit You ready? So this is going to be actually the Man EVA test mark one Because of this particular specific payload that we've got here the lifter is actually this bottom part, and actually, turn that into a subassembly. Oh, we do that later. We could turn it into a subassembly, though, which would be cool. All right, now we're going to do a couple tests at, at the ground pad before we do anything. So this first one is going to be a ground-based test launch, or a test, a systems test. So first things first, we need to have our, our lucky Kerbal here. Um, try and get out of the ship and see what happens. Come on. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Where's... Why isn't there anybody in here? That's weird. No crew? Well, I see other problems already anyways. Okay, let's, let's do the inadvisable thing and we were going to decouple here. It works. Okay. Thank you for letting me know about that. Oh, right, of course, there's nobody in there. All right, vehicle assembly. Now, why is that not manned? Who shall we send? Who shall be our man in orbit? <sighs> How about we send a scientist to orbit? Let's send Bob Kerman into orbit. We want to get some reasonable observations out of this after all. Okay, let's see, what else do we need? We need to, oh yes, fix our uh, gong show of a, uh, oh my god, our uh, staging is completely screwed up right now. Okay, so that's all of the initial launching stuff right there. Stage two engines go there and there. Parachutes for the lower part go there. And the decoupler for that stage goes here as well. So engines and decoupler. That decoupler is going to be in a separate stage from that parachute. And because these are going to become two separate ships, it will be kind of moot. Now we don't want to use up this monopropellant first. Um, this is our first monopropellant. <coughs> okay. Now we should be able to leave him in orbit while we deorbit this first piece. Or we could, you know what? No, I've got an even better idea. Um, well, we should have enough power for both, shouldn't we? I guess we'll see. We have Bob Kermit. Okay, Bob, you need to test the last, the last thing we need to know. Oh, and we're going to do something I've been meaning to do for a while now. Ambient light. There you go. Hopefully that'll make the uh, night launches a little nicer for you guys. Bob, do your EVA and don't fall. Ah, good. Good job, Bob. I hope you're having a nice day. Except you don't have a helmet. I have a concern. I have a concern. Um... <clears throat> he came out without a helmet on, even though I've researched the tech that should give us helmets. Okay, um, give me one second here. Before I launch this thing, I want to confirm something, okay? Just a minute, I'll be right back. Alright, so... I could not find any confirmation one way or another if that guy actually had a spacesuit or not. Um, considering the $50,000 uh, hit, if I lose a Kerbal, I'm going to go with let's not risk it. 
So we're going to have to do a Mooner or Minmus mission first to get the um, uh, to get access to uh, the uh, command pod mark the the big command pod so that we can do an actual EVA mission, which is okay. In the meantime, um, we're going to test this and we're going to see how much fuel we actually have left after this launch here because I think we're going to do quite well. And hey, it's two more payloads to orbit, including one that will get another long-term uh, contract, or a, a recently added contract out of our way, which is not a bad thing. Not exactly what I plan to do today, but the guy getting out of the uh, getting out of the capsule, the EVA with no spacesuit on, just made me sweat a little. And uh, you know what I mean. I just don't want to take the chance, and I need to fix the staging before we launch the ship. Here we are. Let's see. Main engines, center engines, boosters, and those. And the parachutes are the only thing that needs to go into the outer. And the decoupler is in this stage along with the two engines. Perfect. Okay. Launching in three. Two, one, lift off. Wow. Is it just me or are these engines really powerful? It feels like we are gaining speed really quickly right now. Like, a lot faster than previous flights have. I mean, we're already at 100 meters per second at 2,000. Okay, we're losing a bit of speed here. But... Wow, we lost a lot of speed there, actually. There we go. That's okay. It's beautifully stable. Look at this thing go. That is quite the beast, isn't it? All right, 5,000 meters. Boy, I can't get right, wait to get rail decoupler so I can get rid of these things. It's amazing how much more flight capacity that will add just by getting rid of the weight of these things right away. So far, so good. I mean, we've, this, this ship has made it before with the previous engines, and the new design can only be better, right? It says here in fine print. All right, there goes 10,000. Time to start our turn. Right to 45 as quickly as we can. There we go. Keep her stable. Keep her steady, bud. Excellent. All right. So far, so good, guys. Getting ready for our next, uh, st our first staging. Good stuff. This is a nice looking ship. Alright, RCS on for control, because we don't have fins on this one. But we're looking good. Yeah, I just... It just did not seem reasonable to risk the uh, life of a Kerbal on the off chance that we would actually be able to uh, EVA him. Maybe, maybe somebody can confirm if that EVA would have worked for me. That would be nice. But at the moment, I'm just going to go with... I, did, I didn't know for sure, and it's not worth the life of a Kerbal to find out. So this mission is going to have lots of extra mass, because it's only 17, 17 tons of mass, not 70. And there we go. All right, all the way over now. Oh, whoa, did I forget? Ah, crap, I did. Oh, no. I forgot some of my uh, RCS control. That was mildly unfortunate. 
Apoapsis. Prograde. Do, 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 do. Um, come on, Apoapsis. And that's no good. 77, we want it around 74. So we need to that'll do. Okay, 47 second burn right here is what we need to get ourselves into a nice clean orbit. Ready? Go. Because what we're doing is we're putting very little into our apoapsis and a little and a lot into our peri, but we're also aimed in such a way that we won't be uh, ex grossly accelerating our um, or grocery sorry grossly raising our apoapsis at the same time. It says here in fine print, anyways. I just wanted to try that out. Boy, it doesn't give you a lot of time to do it, though, does it? Looking good. We're right at our apoapsis and holding stable. Oh, and our apoapsis is now moving. Boom. Whoa, crap. Well, that was unfortunate. Shoot. I really don't want this thing in a crazy orbit. Okay. So when we get to our... We need to drop our apoapsis a bunch. And then we'll need to raise our periapsis a bit because our, our window for these guys is around 74 kilometers. Turn darn you, turn! I should have slowed the engines down when I was getting close. But when we hit about 74 we should be able to burn our apoapsis down. Let's see, this, this should drop our apoapsis, not our periapsis, because we're at our periapsis right now, we're close to it. As long as I'm careful. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we need to not drop our uh, periaps in the process. Where's our ship? Where are we? That's us, okay. So our apoaps to 74, periaps is down in the atmosphere, which means we need some radial. Okay. Let's see, that one's still going up, okay. So it's radial the other way. We need to actually, actually, if we take out this prograde to zero, we really just need to adjust the radial, don't we? By taking some out of the apoapse and putting it into the periapse with a radial burn. And we need to do that when we are at about 74. So that's what we need to do. We just need to do it a little later. Seventy-two. Seventy-three. That's more what we're looking for right there. Seventy-three. Seventy-four. That's more the window we're looking for. And it's not giving me an estimate of the burn time, which means it's not a very significant burn at all which actually makes a great deal of sense. So we're going to want to burn as close to zero as possible. Oh, please don't burn. Oh, we got lots of... Uh, okay, we got lots of that left. Good. Now this time we're going to try and leave as much uh, chunk of fuel during our re-entry. Maybe even all of it. Okay. 
Just do it right there. And there we go. Our apoapsis is going down. Our periapsis is going up. That's exactly what we want right there. Come on, chase it a little. Good enough. At least we're in the ballpark now. Okay, that's gonna do. All right, next up. We need to get ourselves set up for retro burn to deorbit. Actually, no, we don't wanna be burning towards our payload, do we? So we want to wait until we've decoupled this mess, which we could actually do by dropping it right below us, couldn't we? All right, so we need to say deliver, deliver, decouple node, back up a little, oh, no, back up a little, and rotate us to the orbit. Control from here. Here we go. There's our reentry. We'll take that down to about 40, maybe even 35. That should do it. Perfect. Okay. Full charge, lots of monopropellant. Actually, I probably should have used mostly monopropellant for that job, but oh well. Too late. Alright, we just need to go... Alright, we're heading to our periapsis. We're coming into the atmosphere now. And our monopropellant is mostly going to be used to orient us appropriately for re-entry. So, two contracts. 61,000 for that one. And 13,000 for the world's first. Ta-ha! World first. So funny. I have a, How many payloads have I got in orbit now? And that's the world's first! <laughs> They missed the memo big time on that one, didn't they? All right, let's just uh, take her down a little further here before we start worrying. Coming in nice and shallow. Our periaps is dropping quite nicely. And we're going to have to monitor our temperatures. Our concern starts when these start overheating. We're probably going to lose the RCS controllers, which is, you know, such as life. But as long as that's all we lose, we'll be pretty happy. Now, if these things have a lower overheating issue than the LVT-30s, I may, quite, it's quite probable I won't actually have to uh, retro burn in for the re-entry. All right, there's 60. We have nothing that is actually going to be forcing this thing to orient to the wind except for its shape. So I gotta keep an eye on this a bit. But we're coming in quite nicely and shallow. Now I have no idea if we're, how if if uh, Flower Child changed the rules on landing near KSP or not, or KSC, Kerbal Space Center. I can never remember. I really should go look and see. I don't think it's an issue, but we'll find out soon enough. But hey, even if we can recover part of the price of this thing, it's still a win in my books. Okay. Our temperatures are now rising quite rapidly. Atmospheric friction is beginning to become an issue. And then we are definitely landing because there goes our periapsis. How fast are we going? We are slowing down officially. The uh, atmosphere is officially starting to slow us down, which is good news. I don't want to waste too much energy if the atmosphere is actually doing the slowing successfully for us. 
no sense in wasting energy getting us down to the point where we'll actually start accelerating again. That would be a waste of fuel. I think we're definitely going to be going faster than terminal velocity at this point. That's why, that's why we burn. Okay. Let's see if we can uh, stabilize this thing right on retro now. We'll just use a little bit of uh, SAS control to try and get it under get it where it needs to orient. Okay, you can see the heat starting to form on the engines. But it's coming. Okay, let's rotate it a little further. Yeah, here comes the heating. Let's just try and take that down a little further before we uh, get close to the ground. Because we might be able to save these uh, RCS controllers. But we don't want to use up all our fuel. We want at least 250 left to give us our final little ball pulse of slowdown when we're coming in for a landing. That'll save us our engines. How hot are we getting? 1,000... Okay, still rising, but we're slowing down nicely. And how much of that is actually going to be coming from the fact that the engines are running right now is hard to say. But they're overheating officially now. Oh no, we're still heating. But maybe we can just let the uh, atmosphere take care of the rest and hope for the best. Hope for the best. Oh boy. Oh, we lost something. What did we lose? I think we lost our RCS, didn't we? Oh boy, it's going to be close. That was a close one. We lost our four... Oh, what did we lose this time? What did we lose? We lost our parachutes. No. I don't know what we lost. Oh. Somebody just sent me a message. Just gonna, I can take this quickly, check it. Just a second. I should probably have. Sh um. I should probably have uh, paused while I did that, but that's okay. An invitation to dinner from a friend. Right, I have no RCS anymore, so I am at the mercy of the universe. Okay, shoot deployment is now safe according to the uh, computer, so I will accept that. I've still got to plug this stupid thing in. My cell phone's almost dead. It's making silly noises at me. There we go. Okay, so all I need to do now is use these engines to keep my speed under about, mm, what was it, um, 8 meters per second or so? Yeah, that should do it. Full deployment is coming... Where does that happen? 500 meters or so? Well, so far so good. And I think these things, yeah, 500 altitude. So a very last minute final deployment, but that's okay. The slower the better, right? Last thing we want is for the shoots to fully deploy at top speed. That would be terrible. Looks good. Here we go, final trigger now. Let's see how slow we wind up going. Not quite slow enough. We'll get closer to the ground before we fire the engines. I mean, we have tons of fuel left, but every bit of fuel we take home is money in the bank, right? So there's a, a reasonable quantity of fuel left over. This thing will definitely do the 20 tons for sure with, with breathing space, I think. Okay, here we go. Lame. Too bad. 
those parachutes just aren't adequate for recovering these things. So I lost three quarters of that ship on the landing. I probably I should have fired the engines with a little bit more uh, gusto there at the end. Oh well, you know what? Live and learn. I recovered nine hundred and forty-seven dollars. Whatever. I'm at four hundred and fifteen thousand dollars for my funds. I don't. Th I didn't get any new science for that, of course, but that took care of two more successful um, missions. And I'm gonna have to be careful about sending people. Huh, Maxo construction toys, small payload to orbit. Hey, mm -hmm. I just did that one, didn't I? That's weird. I could swear I just did that mission, didn't I? Yeah, I did. There it is. Weird. It's offering it again. It must just be confused because of the, uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, because because these were added later. There's just something confusing. Because now I have a small payload contract instead of a medium payload contract. Isn't that interesting? Okay, well, you know what? A job for another day, but for the moment, that's all for now. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye for now.